and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made to fill the hearts which thou hast made please be seated so i'm recording the uh homily this morning uh because I don't want to hear another complaint from Anne Marie that only I only record things in Spanish. <laughs> she says, Father, I get all these notices and they're all in Spanish. When put it in English, so here it is in English. Okay, um, uh, the, the sermon uh, for this morning, the second Sunday in Advent. I'm uh, asking for your prayers because sometime this month I'm going to have uh, surgery on my right eye uh, corneal for my corneal um, abrasion that I have. And I don't want to hear any remedies, okay? You know, people are t giving me all these teas I need to drink and, and creams I got to put on, you know. The eye... It's not, it's not your belly button, okay? <laughs> or some other hole in your body that you can put a cream on. <laughs> so, thank you so much for uh, all of your home remedies, but it's not the same uh, uh, in the eye. So, just keep me in your prayers. Um, I'm kind of seeing double here. Uh, uh, from the one eye right now, but uh, uh, it, it will get there. You know, that is uh, so often the way that uh, the devil in our life tries to attack us. All of this, a lot of this stems from um, the one time, but it was about two years ago, that this lady uh, came at me after Mass uh, and she lunged at me, I guess, to hug me or whatever, and she poked me in the eye, and she had, and with her fingernail, she scratched my, my cornea, and I had an infection as well, and as the doctor said to me when I went to see him, he says, God only knows where her fingernail was <laughs> before, <laughs> before she scratched your cornea. Uh, so, um, that's how it is in life. We get attacked so many times and are brought down in our life. And those attacks come from the people in our life. It's people who attack us who do the work of the devil. You all know that I had my family here, my brother and my nephews and my sister-in-law for Thanksgiving. And I not only had them visit me, but I also had to cook Thanksgiving dinner. And so that means I had to shop for Thanksgiving dinner. And I'm in aisle three of Smith's. And this lady says to me, because I was dressed uh, as a priest, this lady says to me, aren't you afraid wearing your Roman collar? Aren't you afraid? that people will think you're a priest wearing this? And she points to it, because I always wear it everywhere. Aren't you afraid what people will think of you? Don't you know what people think of priests today? And I looked at her and I said, well, I don't belong to a church that is sinless. I belong to a God who is sinless. And my God is perfect. But the people in the church are not. God made human beings 
not perfect beings. She says, if I was you, I wouldn't dress like this. She said. And then in African American lady standing in the same aisle three of Smith's because my my face went down. Of course, I became extremely sad at hearing this. And she in the same line says to me, now child, stand up straight, she says. Now child, stand up straight and look like the man full of courage that you are. In the same aisle three. Because it's like that in our life. You've got a lot of people in your life at work, co-workers, family members, a lot of voices out there to bring you down. That is the work of the devil that accuses you in your life. We've been having some turmoil even here in our own parish with people doing the work of the devil, which is the work of division. The devil is a divider. And the accuser, diabolus in Latin, which is where you get the word devil from, is the slasher, the divider, the one who comes to divide and hurt. God comes to unite. And then Satan in Hebrew, the accuser, the one who tells you you're no good. It's that voice from the past, the voice of your ex or the voice of those people who worked against you in your life, who told you you were no good, you would amount to nothing. There are those voices, and then you come here today, and you hear my voice, mm? <laughs> which should be the voice of the Lord coming to you right now to say, no. It's like that voice with that lady. Stand up straight and act like the man of courage that you are. You need that voice that tells you, you are loved, you are cherished, you are wanted, everything is going to be okay. You need that voice. There are a lot of people in the aisle three of our life saying to us, aren't you afraid? You should be full of fear. Look at your life, look at your sickness, look at your marriage. Look at all the stuff that's going on around you in the world, our political situation, the virus situation, your family situation. They say everything is horrible and they are the voices of gloom and darkness. Whether inside of us or outside of us saying to us, aren't you afraid? And if you aren't, you should be. Today's gospel, you know, begins with a list of political leaders from the time of Jesus. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod the tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip was tetrarch of Eudorea and so on, they, they sound like venereal diseases, you know. <laughs> And in a lot of ways, they are diseases, aren't they? To, during the priesthood of Anus and Caiaphas, A, A, Anus, excuse me, okay. <laughs> to the people who first heard these names, they meant something because... The first listeners would have groaned when they heard of these terrible leaders responsible for so much suffering. They were their oppressors. These people are connected to the dark period in Jewish history. And it was during this time when it was all so dark and gloomy that the people heard the, new, the good news. When it was so horrible. All the people who brought them down, God brought light in the midst of darkness. In the midst of all these people who worked for the enemy, like Tiberius and Pilate and Herod and Philip, 
who are all associated with suffering and darkness. And you know, it, it, we don't get it because you don't know these political leaders. You know the political leaders of today. So it's like as if I was to come up here and say to all of you, in those days when Richard Nixon was in charge of honesty <laughs> and Bill Clinton in charge of chastity. <laughs> I did not have sexual relations with, right? Okay. And Hillary Clinton in charge of email security. <laughs> and Donald Trump in charge of hair care. <laughs> you get the idea? They would have gotten it. It was in those days full of fear and tribulation, and darkness, and oppression, that the word of God came to John. Where? In the desert. Welcome to Las Vegas. <laughs> huh? The desert is a, is, a, is a place of desolation, emptiness, and suffering. Mm? That is why Luke gave us these names saying in those days when we had lost our home, when we had lost our hope, when foreign powers are occupying us, what is it that's occupying you? Your depression, your fear, your anxiety, the problem with your child, uh, some sickness, some disease, maybe marital issues, whatever it is. You know, we all, we all got stuff that is occupying us. Maybe the estrangement with your family member, Mm -hmm. that you're not talking to somebody like your child, your daughter or, or son, mm -hmm. or people don't pay attention to you. You know, whatever it is that is occupying you and trying to destroy you. Mm -hmm. In those days, what does that mean? In our days. You get it? In our days. When we had lost our hope, when suffering was overwhelming and fear and anger and hope, seemed foolish. In those days, the word of God came to John in the desert and that same word is coming to you today. Take it in. Hmm? When it was darkest and it is in the darkest time that God says, I'm going to do something and you, John the Baptist, need to do something too. Tell the people that God is going to do something. And this requires that the people do something as well, which means they need to cooperate. So I'm telling you right now, stop praying if you're not willing to cooperate in, in the answering of your prayer. Your prayer means nothing if you're not willing to put the action there. Faith and works. We're Catholic, are we not? Yes. That means we got to put our action where our mouth is. God, I want this. Do it. You know, I, I want my life to change. I'm lonely, but you're not doing anything to get a partner to change your life. You get it? You know, I want my life to change. I'm depressed, but I'm not willing to go and get the medicine for my depression and get help for it. I want my life to change. You know, I'm fat and overweight and I'll, I'll continue eating ding-dongs and ho-hos. Huh? Somebody came the other day and said, Father, you know, how did you lose all your weight? Kathy here knew me when I used to weigh a lot, right? You know? She can tell you because she knows me from uh, that, that period in my life. And, you know, did I, you could tell them, did I lose weight drinking holy water? No. I started exercising. Remember that? I used to go to the gym, you know, eating correctly. Uh, yeah, you got to, you know, I was praying, Lord, help me. But I needed to do the, the work. If you're not willing to do the work, stop praying because it ain't going to work. It's not like the heaven's going to open and boom, you know. God's going to come and fix it for you. God's going to help you, but you got to do it. Huh? You have to cooperate. Help is coming, but this help means 
demands cooperation. Repentance means that you change the way you think. Huh? Stop trying to avoid the issue. You know, stop trying to avoid the, uh, uh, tackling the problem. You know, maybe your employment situation, your house situation, or whatever it is. Because you're only going to get yourself into more trouble by avoiding it. Huh? That's, that's what happens in our life. People avoid dealing with their loneliness, their depression, or whatever, and they avoid it by getting themselves into more doo-doo, into more caca. Like they avoid it by going to the bottle or going to drugs, or Las Vegas, going to the casino. Huh? Instead of tackling the problem head on. Do you know, you all know about the Titanic? Have you heard of the Titanic? If you haven't watched the movie, it's pretty good. <laughs> Romantic. <laughs> Why? Do you know that the Titanic and if you watch the movie, it will show you in the movie when it was heading straight for the iceberg. All the people would have survived if it had not avoided, tried to avoid the iceberg. If it would have just hit the iceberg head on, look it up, Google it. If the Titanic, if the captain of the Titanic would have not tried to avoid the iceberg, but hit it straight on, it would have still sunk it would have taken it four hours more to sink. It would have bought them four more hours and everybody would have survived. But by trying to avoid hitting the iceberg, thousands of people died. You get it? Stop avoiding it. Tackle the problem. In those days and in these days, Hold on to the fact that God is consistent. And just like he intervened then, he will intervene in our own darkness, bringing hope in the midst of the darkness in our life. You want that hope? You got to go get it. Hmm? What's Christmas all about? The birth of a baby. I have been speaking about this for so long. What needs to happen in order for the baby to be born? You got to open up. Hmm? So if you feel burdened in these days, feeling concerned and you don't know what to do in a divided and disoriented world, pray, ask for guidance, and then do it. Hmm? We have to do it. God's going to help you but you have to be willing to cooperate with him helping you in bringing about whatever Christmas you desire and need to be born in your life. Jesus was born once and we celebrate his birth because he has to be born again in our life. I want Jesus to be born in your life, which is new life. Newness. What is that newness that you need to have born in your life? Hmm? I know we can all do it because God is with us. And if God is with us, who can be against us? It will all be fine. Hmm? So we continue to pray. We hope and we don't give up and we do the work hmm? as we continue our prayer today. Waking up. Hello, hello. Let's stand and profess our faith. <laughs>